Y'all are going to up your rookie drafts. And I don't mean that in a good way. I know y'all are going to mess shit up. I know how y'all operate. I know a lot of things. And this is for sure. Okay. So this is going to be a video. So this is going to be a list of five things not to do in your dynasty rookie draft. Five ways that I already know y'all are going to fuck up. NFL draft is in two days. We will be live streaming for the entirety of it. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's going to be big. It's going to be bold. It's going to be our best live stream ever. We've got the whole production crew working in the fucking HQ right now. And I'm very excited about it. Okay. So buckle in, tuck your shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's <laughs> What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome. Bike to the channel. Welcome. Bike to the studio. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. And as already done stated, we are doing a list. Five things that you should not be doing in your Dynasty Rookie Drafts that I've seen many people do many, many times. And they will make you a better rookie drafter, make you a better dynasty player, make you a better fantasy player overall. Cause maybe these are, you know, a lot of these things I think are like top of mind or those things that like, you don't realize that you're doing, like, you know, you're doing it. Once someone tells you that you're doing it, you're like, ah, that makes so much sense, but you don't fucking follow it on your own. So I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to stroll you down these five things in which y'all should not do in your fantasy rookie drafts. Numero one, the overall theme of taking undersized players. I'm talking about, you know, we could put a random number behind it. And that's kind of what I did in a tweet this weekend. But I realized that people just hate random numbers and they get angry when you start to do that. But the threshold I pretty much put and we'll explain it out. We'll bear it out for you in terms of what I mean is about 175 pounds for wide receivers and sub 200 pound running backs. People get obsessed with these undersized players. You know what happens when you're that size? Typically, you have these traits that come along with being that size that make them tantalizing. They are amazing in Twitter clips. Very rarely do these undersized players translate into real NFL quality fantasy players, okay? Because you see them cutting on a fucking dime. You see them with 4-3 speed. Of course, when you're 122 pounds, you better be fucking flying at 4-3 speed. Otherwise, you bring nothing to the table in the NFL, okay? The hit rate on those dudes, legitimately, as fun as they are to watch and as cool as they were in college because they were such a dominant athlete relative to everybody else on the field, is just so small, okay? Those dudes raise, those dudes hit at like a rate of 4%. I mean, last year, you're looking back and you could just name it's Rondell Moore, Tutu Atwell, Jalen Darden. It's like all these guys, we just, Javian Hawkins, that we get upset. I don't even, like, even with draft capital, I, I, I don't really care. Last year in fantasy, I'm going to rip these big facts out for you. There was one, one wide receiver under 175 pounds that finished as a top 30 fantasy wide receiver. That was Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown was the only sub 175 pound wide receiver to finish as a top 30 fantasy wide receiver. Austin Eckler was the only running back last year under 200 pounds to finish as a top 24 running back. Dude, the numbers don't lie here, okay? Every once in a while, you have these smaller backs that have big, volatile type seasons where they have big games and then small games and big games and small games, whatever. And it ends up with a calculation of them finishing within this. That you just never get consistency from these guys because NFL coaches and teams look at these guys and they pigeonhole them into a specific role. Honestly, Hollywood Brown, he weighed in much heavier afterwards too. So that might not even be like a hard fact. Pretty sure right now he's at 180 pounds, but I went off of the prospect. Like when they weighed in at the combine or their pro day, whatever their official weigh-ins were at the time of being a prospect, those were the numbers I used in order to, obviously something like Eckler's definitely over 200 pounds now from working out. Hollywood, I think is over 175 pounds, which would make my argument stronger. But the point being, there are some guys in the class this year that I think maybe they don't become an auto fade for you, but you should be looking at them with a lot more hesitation based on these numbers, okay? And you look at the list here at the running back position, James Cook, Tyler Goodson, Tyler Batty, Jerion Ely, Kyron Williams, five running backs under 200 pounds, okay? And I know James Cook, 199 pounds. He just has to eat a fucking big lunch. That was a good, uh, that was a good tweet, Josh Norris. Point being, they're undersized, sure. 199 doesn't fucking matter if you're 200, but the hit rate of 
players who are 202 pounds or 203 pounds is not fucking good either. That's the point I'm trying to get across. The smaller you are, the less likelihood you have of succeeding at the NFL level. And that's why I'm nervous about these players on this list. In terms of wide receivers, we're actually okay here. We have Wondell Robinson at 178 pounds, but he's 5'8". We have Calvin Austin at 170 pounds, 5'8". Okay, you look at the rest of the wide receiver class, you can look at Jahan Dotson, he's pretty undersized, but he's 5'11", 178. Jameson Williams, 179 pounds, 6'2". Those are the only ones that you could probably be concerned with weight-wise, but I'm not worried about wide receivers that are on the smaller side in terms of weight when they have the height to supplement it, okay? If you're six foot, 172, like Devonta Smith, fine with that because he has the height to supplement it. But when you have guys like Wondell Robinson and Calvin Austin, these guys very rarely hit when they're undersized, both weight-wise and height-wise. They just don't have a real role in the NFL, okay? I know you guys are just going to name a bunch of fucking unicorns in the comments. That's what they are. They're unicorns. They very, very rarely hit. So if we're going to continue to use, the point being is like, and I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, those guys are all like third, fourth round picks and rookie drafts. It's like, Yes, I'm, some of you guys are going to take James Cook in the second round. It's not about the draft capital that you're using on them as as much as it is the guys that you're passing up. Like some of you guys might take Tyler Batty over Pierre Strong, who's 10 pounds heavier and runs a 4.37. It's the guys that you're passing up that have a higher likelihood of actually hitting at the NFL level because of their size or athleticism, whatever the fucking case may be. So you have Dotson again, he's 5'11", 178. So I'm not concerned because he has a little bit of height to go along with the fact that he is over 175 anyways. Jameson Williams, 6'2", 180, not worried about him at all. But case in point, I'm just going to reiterate that fact from last year. Hollywood Brown, the only wide receiver in the top 30 fantasy wide receivers that weighed less than 175 pounds. Austin Eckler, the only running back in the top 24 fantasy running backs last year to weigh under 200 pounds. It's a fucking theme. It's a real thing. So do not take that shit for granted, no matter how much you like this 182 pound running back, because you saw him play in person and he was really fast. Fuck yourself. Sorry, I didn't mean that. Number two on this list, trading away good players for bad players. Picks. The first example that would come to mind is, you know, your friend is on the clock at the 3-3 and there's a player that you love still on the board. So you want to trade in order to get that pick and you're going to trade away in that moment of lapse. You're going to you're, you're going to succumb to your weak fucking frontal lobe in your brain. That's your animal brain that just wants short term pleasure immediately and you're going to trade away a guy who Khalil Herbert you're going to trade away Khalil Herbert to get the 303 because you like a running back in this class do not trade away good players while a player that you like is still available on the clock later in drafts because the likelihood of hitting on a third round a fourth round a late second round rookie pick is really re I know we you know it, it's enticing to have the 206 the 208 the 210 the 301 because there's so much hype around this time about these rookies and we get more and more excited as they happen the the realistic viewpoint of this is the hit rate on these guys is so small the hit rate on first round rookie picks in rookie dynasty drafts in super flex rookie drafts is like 50% you, you drop to the second round and especially the late second round, and you're probably looking at like a 25% hit rate. And hit rate is like one season of top 20 finish or something like that. You get into the third round, we're talking about like a 10% hit rate. Fourth round, fucking forget about it, all right? So do not trade away proven players with real path to upside within the next year or two, because these rookies probably don't have a real path in the third round of rookie drafts to upside or to, to playing time in an NFL field immediately, okay? So don't trade away proven commodities for a chance of hitting a 20% hit rate in the third round while your homie is on the clock. All right. Number three is not diversifying. If you are in multiple leagues, this is something that I yell about in redraft in season long leagues, as well as dynasty and rookie drafts. Okay. What I mean is if you're in multiple, leagues, if you're in a, if one, if you're a dynasty player and you're getting ready for your rookie drafts right now, you're probably in like anywhere from two to fucking 19 dynasty leagues. And the worst thing that you could do for your overall portfolio is to not diversify, is to fall in love with one single player and draft him in every single league. Like if you were an idiot last year like me and you loved Trey Sermon, guess what? You took Trey Sermon over Michael Carter or Elijah Moore or Amon Ross St. Brown every time. The overall case in point here is you are just simply not as good at player evaluation as you think you are. Okay, so number three is diversify the revenue. If you are on the clock at the 204 this year and you're there, you're in the 203 to 206 range in three different leagues. One league go with Jahan Dotson. One league go with Rashad White. One league go with Christian Watson. Okay, maybe maybe there is a guy that you absolutely love, but do not go in 100% on a single player. It, it, it might work out one time. 
but it'll burn you more often than not. Always diversify the revenue. You're not as good at player evaluation as you think you are, but we are fucking, we are over here at BDGE because we got the rookie draft guide going. All right, we got the rookie draft guy going, and we have been going in depth on every single fantasy relevant player. It'll be at your fingertips, and hopefully, the next week we'll have it live for you. In order to get access to the rookie draft guide for free, you're going to go to Prize Picks, right? The link will be in the description. If you sign up on Prize Picks with the promo code BDGE, $10 will get you one $10 to play with on Prize Picks, plus an extra $10 to play with on Prize Picks. So you're getting $20 for your 10 plus our rookie draft guide, which will have our rookie rankings, which will be updated pre NFL draft, post NFL draft, but really, really in depth write ups on every rookie, every fantasy relevant rookie in this class. Okay. So anything that you need prep wise for your rookie draft will be right there in the rookie draft guide. All you got to do, prize picks, whether it's on the app or prizepicks.com, throw $10 in there. Use promo code BDGE. Whatever you put in up to a hundred dollars, they're going to, they're going to match your deposit. So if you throw 20, you're going to have 40 in your account to play with. If you throw 80, you're going to have 160 in your account to play with. All right. It's a beautiful thing. You get to play with that money. Plus the rookie draft guide prize picks. We love you. You're going to love prize picks. Number four, passing on first round quarterbacks in super flex. All right. Here's the way I look at quarterback evaluation. You guys have probably heard me talk about this at nauseum at this point, because we've had a lot of guys within our BDGE community, right off Josh Allen, right off Justin Herbert. And those turned out to be quite arguable. I mean, most of Dynasty Twitter did this when they were coming into the league. And if you think about it, that should have ripped away all credibility from every single analyst that talked down on those guys, because those are two of probably the top five most valuable assets in all of dynasty super flex leagues right now so if you were fading them in rookie drafts you faded yourself out of fucking championships without a fucking doubt so if a qb is drafted in the first round of the real nfl draft you should be drafting him in the first round of rookie drafts doesn't mean it doesn't mean if someone drafts somebody at pick 28 you need to pick him at the 102 but you should not be taking fringe third round running backs or early day two wide receivers over first round NFL quarterbacks. Those players are so valuable. All right. Again, it goes back to the point that we're not as good at player evaluations as we think we are. And this is so, tr this is even more true when it comes to quarterbacks, right? There is never a point in dynasty leagues where a quarterback's value in super flex leagues is as low as it is in rookie drafts and your dynasty startup draft. That is the lowest value you're ever going to be able to get those guys for because you'll, you can't trade for quarterbacks in, in leagues because when you're in the middle of a startup draft, the demand is not the same as afterwards because you're looking at the draft board and there's 15 starting quarterbacks left. So the demand is not that high or the supply is very high. I should say the supply is very high. You could still draft them. You know, you could, you say to yourself, Oh, I'll get one next round. Oh, I'll get one next round. However, after the startup draft, after the rookie draft, they're all accounted for. Therefore, the supply is literally fucking zero. So it's basic economics. It's never going to be cheaper than when you're in the middle of your rookie drafts, okay? And the fact that we cannot properly predict how good a quarterback is going to be in the NFL, but the NFL is telling you that they're worth a first round pick should trigger to you that it's a one of the safest, best investments you can make in rookie drafts. Like even dudes like Daniel Jones, when he was picked sixth overall by the Giants, right? And in rookie drafts, he was going in the beginning of the second round, right? And he has held value in Superflex Dynasty Leagues for the entirety of his rookie contract without even being good. Like if I wanted to trade for Daniel Jones right now, you would have to give up the pick that you spent on getting him to begin with, right? Like I would have, you'd have to give up in order to get a starting quarterback in the NFL right now, a guy like Daniel Jones, we don't even know if he's going to be a quarterback next year. You would probably still have to trade like the 201, the 202 in order to get him in a super flex league. So five years later, after a shit rookie contract, he still held exactly the same value. And with a little bit of luck, if he was any good, if he has a good year this year, that goes up to a back end of the first round pick without a doubt. And this is such a good year for this, having the back end of the first, early second round picks, because we have a lot of quarterbacks that are bordering on that first round of NFL draft capital, right? You have Matt Corral, we have Sam Howell, we have Desmond Ritter. Right now, if you're looking at any Vegas uh, sports books, BetUS has Kenny Pickett as minus 5,000 going in the, in the first round. So he's going to be a first round pick, probably top 15 pick. Malik Willis, not even on here because he's such a lock to go that early. But we have Matt Corral, minus 175. You have Desmond Ritter and Sam Howell, both at minus 125. So they're actually expected, because this is what Vegas does, they don't give you any juice, but they're expected to go in the first round. And those are the guys who are probably going to get picked late that you're like, ah, you know, if you don't like them as a talent, you're going to fade them. But that's a fucking mistake because you don't know how good they're going to be in the NFL. And whoever is the least hyped out of those guys coming out of the draft, maybe they get to the worst team, someone like the Texans take one of them or some shit like that. Those are going to be the guys that drop to the 203, the 204, 205 going to be a huge mistake if you let them slide like they're not only an extremely safe pick as an investment but 
But again, you're talking about a first round quarterback or guys like Zamir White or Rashad White or like Jahan Dotson. Like, listen, I, I love those guys as, as much as the next piece of shit out there like you guys. But the likelihood of those guys busting or just not being great fantasy players or not holding the type of value that a quarterback does in Superflex is just so much higher. Boom. Number five. This is not necessarily something you shouldn't do, but this is something you should consider moving your current pick for an earlier pick next year. When you're on the clock in the same way that you wanted to pick, but you're willing to give up Khalil Herbert for it, you're going to be on the clock and someone's going to want your pick because someone's going to love a rookie that drops to the 303. So if you're on the clock in the second round and there's not a player that you're in love with, what you're going to want to do is move that second round for, you know, you probably won't be able to flip a second for a first. The first is just like the, having the one in front of a pick is just far too valuable. M most people won't just make that move straight up, but maybe you can move two seconds for a first next year. Or you move a second for a second and a third next year. Okay, so you, you acquire two picks because, again, we're not as good at, at player evaluation as we think we are. So get as many fucking dart throws as you can. Move your current second round pick for a 2023 second and third. Or you're in a third round pick, early third round. You can move an early third round pick this year while you're on the clock for a second round pick next year. And that second round pick next year might turn in, you know, it might turn into the 210. But there's a good chance that you have no idea how the league is going to play out and it turns into like the 204. And then you move the third round pick into the 204 of a really strong 2023 class. Or you, again, you could move that current third round pick for two thirds next year. And you're getting multiple, multiple value picks on top of just one pick. Time is fucking money and people are willing to pay a premium to get what they want, who they want, and more specifically get them right fucking now. Boom. That is the end of the video, people. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we will be covering everything NFL draft-wise. Make sure uh, you're tuning in for the NFL draft stream. That'll kick off, I, I think, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday night. We'll be streaming Friday night. We'll be streaming Saturday afternoon. So make sure you join us. Fucking stock your alcoholic shelves. Get DoorDash on speed dial. You're going to be eating with us. You're going to be drinking with us. You're probably not going to be laughing with us because we ain't that funny. But we'll have a fucking good-ass time. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. And most importantly, if you want our rookie draft guide, which is just, we work so fucking hard on it, go over to prizepicks.com or download the prizepicks app. The link will be the first thing in the description. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and they're going to match it. You're going to get the rookie draft guide, and you're going to get the play on prize picks. I love y'all. Those are five things that you should not be doing in your dynasty rookie drafts, unless you want to fucking take an L. Some of y'all are sick freaks that like pain, so do what you got to do. But I love you.